Good afternoon and welcome to the August 3rd uh, regular city commission meeting, the city of Daytona Beach. We're delighted to have each of you with us this evening. At this time, I would ask Ms. LaMagna for a roll call. Commissioner Traeger. Here. Commissioner Strickland. Here. Commissioner May. Here. Commissioner Cantu. Here. Commissioner Henry. Present. Commissioner Reed. Here. Mayor Derek L. Henry. Here. And I believe for this meeting as well, we need a motion to allow her to attend virtually. Second. Okay. Second. second. All right, we'll take a motion from Commissioner May and a second from Commissioner Strickland. Do we have any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries for 7 0. Okay. So now at this point, we are going to move on to item number four, which is approval of the minutes of the March 2nd, 2022 growth on LPGA workshop, the June 15th shade meeting, the July 6th shade meeting, and the July 20th, 2022 affordable housing workshop. So move. Take a motion from Commissioner Cantu and a second from Commissioner Henry. Um, no questions or comments. All those in favor? Well, this Sorry, one. sorry, one second, one second. Let me just catch up for a second. I was thinking about something else, one second. Okay, so let's have a conversation about this. We're 8B, correct? No, we're on the minutes. Oh, sorry, okay. sorry, I was thinking That's ahead. Okay. Sorry about that, sorry, go ahead. Eight. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my mistake, go ahead. All right, we have... Uh, a motion, we have a second, accept the uh, minutes. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those who are opposed, same sign. Motion carries, 7-0. Uh, All right, this time we will have our agenda approval. If there are any changes, our city manager will address them. Yes, Honorable Mayor Commissioners, we're adding to item 8G, $350 to the Derbyshire Community Tennis, Inc. for travel expenses to an event September the 7th in New York from the Bike Week Sponsorship Funds of Mayor Derek L. Henry. We're adding item 8H, um, City Manager's Office, Orange Avenue Recreation Center Committee Term Extension. We're asking for that to go through um, September. Um, and also, we are going to be um, removing the nexus study from the consent um, agenda to administrative items for anyone um, that there were some comments about um, continuing it or moving it forward. So we're going to be taking it off the consent agenda item and moving it to the administrative items. And at that time, the commissioners that may have concerns wanting to continue or discuss it or move it forward will have that opportunity. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda with correction. Second. All right, we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. We have <clears throat> no presentations this evening, so we're going to move on to item number seven, which is our citizen comments. And during this time, citizens have the opportunity to address the city commission on any item on the consent agenda. And if you had signed up for item number 8B, I'm going to hold on to your speaker sheet to speak when that item is called during the administrative items. And that leaves me with Mr. John Nicholson, who's speaking on 8F. Okay then I have no additional speakers for the consent agenda. All right, we have no additional speakers. We have a consent. We have a motion and a second for the consent agenda. So I have. Second. The motion, Commissioner Cantu. I'll take a second from Commissioner Strickland. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7-0. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to item number nine, which is our public hearings. 
Item number 9A is the Development Administrative Services Planning Division, Karis mm. Large Scale Comprehensive Plan Amendment. This is an ordinance on first reading public hearing. An ordinance adopting a large scale comprehensive plan amendment in accordance with Chapter 163, Part 2, Florida Statutes, adopting an amendment to the future land use map, changing the future land use designation of 67.5 plus acres of property generally located west of Williamson Boulevard, east of Interstate 95, and approximately 0 0.3 miles south of the Williamson Boulevard and Bellevue Avenue intersection at 1094 South Williamson Boulevard from AC1, ACI Volusia County Activity Center Industrial and ACTC Activity Center Tourist Commercial to GI General Industrial, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict with and providing an effective date. I do have Ms. Jessica Gow here on behalf of the applicant for any questions. And this item, I believe we actually need a motion to submit these to the state. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Yes, ma'am. Second. Oh, yeah. motion from Commissioner Ken, two seconds from Commissioner Traeger. Yep. All right. Uh, and, and you got Ms. Gow. And no we have no Ms. questions Gow. for Ms. Gow? And no additional speakers. All right, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. The public hearing and final action will be September 21st. Moving on to item 9B, it's Development Administrative Services Planning Division, Hillwood Large Scale Comprehensive Plan Amendment. This is an ordinance on second reading public hearing. An ordinance adopting comprehensive plan amendments in accordance with Chapter 163, Part 2, Florida Statute, in relation to 211 acres of land sub of the subject property generally located approximately 1,200 feet southeast of the intersection of Williamson Boulevard and Bellevue Avenue, amending the future land use map designation of 101 plus acres of the subject property from city commercial amusement to mixed use, amending the future land use designation of 110 plus or minus acres of the subject property from Volusia County Activity Center Industrial to mixed use, amending the future land use element neighborhood Q development policy with regard to the subject property, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective. So I'll move. We have a motion from Commissioner Cantu and a second from Commissioner May. And okay. I do have Mr. Mark Watts here for any questions on behalf of the applicant. No questions for Mr. Ma uh, Mr. Watts? Actually, I would like to have some questions on the next 9C. Okay. All right. I have to do a Don't have any additional mm -hmm. speakers for... All right. Uh, motion and a second. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same aye. sign. Motion carries 7-0. We're going to move on to item 9C. It's the Development Administrative Services Planning Division, Hillwood Plan Development General. This is an ordinance on second reading, quasi-judicial hearing. An ordinance amending the zoning map of the Land Development Code to rezone 211 plus or minus acres of property located approximately 1,200 feet southeast of the intersection of Williamson Boulevard and Bellevue Avenue on the south side of Bellevue Avenue across from the Daytona Beach International Airport from M3, this is General Industrial, and MSD, Major Sports District, to PDG Plan Development General, approving the Hillwood Plan district agreement authorizing the development of large-scale light industrial uses, limited high-intensity commercial uses, and institutional uses, subject to certain conditions, authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute the agreement, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. So move. We have a motion and a second, and we have a speaker. Uh, I just have Mr. Watts here signed up for a presentation. Okay. Ms. Cantu. Yes, I would like him to come up and do a presentation. This has been a lot of work, teamwork, going back and forth with a lot, DOT, City, Hillwood, NASCAR, and a Pelican Bay residents, which very happy. We did our vote on Monday night, um, 17 HOA, well, actually 16 HOAs, because one was absent. The vote was um, 14 to two, um, passing. Um, Actually, as of today, uh, yesterday, you changed something, so the other vote is a positive, Sue, so only one negative. And let me point out, um, there are some changes that Mr. Watts will identify for you tonight, and that your motion should include the changes which will be presented. Correct. All right. Good evening. 
Uh, for the record, Mark Watts with the law firm of Cobb Cole, 231 North Woodland Boulevard, Deland, and appreciate the opportunity to be here here on behalf of uh, Hillwood and, and NASCAR as the property owners or, or the, the couple entities that are listed in the applications. Um, have with me this evening uh, members of our team, Scott Martin with uh, Hillwood, um, Jeff Berger and Cheryl Coxwell with NASCAR, and then Chris Rowley and Jake Steer with uh, uh, Zev Cohen and Associates, and Jessica Gal with Cobb Cole is here as well. And so um, first off, I want to start off by thanking Commissioner Cantu. We've, we've done a great deal of work and coordination with her and her constituents on, uh, on some of the issues that we're going to talk through on this. So I've got a couple slides, and we'll kind of go through the first several quickly because uh, we already talked about some of these, and you just uh, voted on the, the land use amendment. But um, I think you, got, you, you all are familiar with uh, some of the discussion that was going on and, and some of the concerns that have been. Um, we've had a couple workshops with the, the neighborhood and with the Pelican Bay Association to go through um, some mitigation alternatives for some of their traffic concerns. But um, again, this is the overall site that you see here, Bellevue on the north, uh, Williamson down to uh, the bottom of the screen here, and then off screen, actually, if you go over here a minute, uh, oh, I'll get to it in a second. Um, off screen, it goes down and, and connects to, to uh, Bevel. So, um, the land use amendment you just passed really is is about consolidation. Uh, that's what the land use and the zoning are about here. We're bringing together some different land uses that were out there. We had a county uh, uh, industrial land use. We had a a uh, city um, uh, commercial amusement land use, and we're you know, we've brought them now together under your mixed use classification and put a neighborhood policy in place that limits the overall trip generation um, to reduce uh, uh, traffic beyond what the or below what the current land use would allow. Um, and then we get to the rezoning, and that's when we're the focus of our discussion with uh, with the neighborhood and working with uh, Commissioner Cantu and some of the residents out there has, has occurred. So right now we had a, a mix of, of M3 and, and major sports district zoning. Um, the proposal is to consolidate everything under, you know, kind of a mixed use zoning that really focuses on non-residential use. So there's not residential use included in this. It's an appropriate area for job creation, additional uh, employment base for the city. And so that's really been the focus of the overall PD. But as we've got into the, to the discussions of some of the activities that we're moving forward, and you've heard the discussion of the Amazon development that's under construction out there now, um, that was under existing zoning and as it got its site plan approval, um, that raised some concerns about overall traffic in the area. And so- Wait, can we just oh. back up and- Yes. Amazon did not come through the city. For That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so Amazon, just, just to re refresh everybody's memory, the property that, that the Amazon is under construction on already had industrial zoning. So it was approved as a site plan through the city's administrative processes. Um, and so that um, has been underway for some time. You've probably seen the, the building. The, you, know, you see it's a pretty impressive building that's going, on, uh, going up out there right now. Um, so, you know, the zoning is really addressing kind of bringing everything into um, to one set of rules. And that also gave us the opportunity to, to kind of listen to and address uh, some of the traffic considerations. So for the portion of the property under development, we've already, I think, uh, submitted to the county both the agreement to build some of the county's road network and a prop share uh, payment in the neighborhood of about $2.7 million. So that's already been paid. And we'll have a similar prop share obligation on the western portion when a development comes forward um, for that portion. But one of the things that, um, if you see the map that we've got up here now, the warehouse site is the, the area that's under development now. We've tried to show you some of the other connections that are being created with this, uh, this, uh, this PD and this rezoning. So um, we've talked recently about the importance of not putting all traffic onto kind of major corridors and providing for alternative pathways. And so you can see here, some of the alternative pathways that are under development with you know the the current um, phase, but we we also started uh, talking with some of the residents in the area about you know the concerns with with regard to tra truck traffic and things of that nature coming out on the county's road, which if you see the road that comes down and connects to Bevel there um, across from where Pelican Bay Drive is, and I'm told now that's going to be referred that to as Enterprise state Way. Road. You said county road, state road. State road, correct. Thank you. Um, the road that goes up into the county property is going to be known as Enterprise Way. I think that's the, the name that they've ultimately decided to go with. Um, we've, we've really focused on trying to, to, to address some of the concerns there. And so a um, couple of the things, this is the long-term, you know, development pattern that you see in this whole area. The area to the right that's kind of highlighted in white, that's um, the county's master plan for the, the airport property that's in county ownership. 
And so here's the specific things that we've worked on. Uh, first and foremost, um, there's a, existing issues with the, the signal. Um, those are not things that were caused by any of the development or the PD rezoning. But right now, the, when, when residents come out of Pelican Bay, they come out of that signal and it's got what's called permissive operation. In other words, they don't have any time at which they get priority with a turning movement. Um, and so that's an existing condition. It wasn't something that our traffic analysis triggered for us to come back and, and make an improvement there. But after listening to them, getting our traffic engineers to dive a little bit deeper into what we could do there, um, we worked with the D uh, Department of Transportation. Again, it's their roadway with Bevel Road being uh, State Road 400. So what we've added now, and this is a requirement in the PD, is an upgrade to that signal, an upgrade that will give residents coming out of Pelican Bay priority um, so that they will have a not only a, a left turn signal, but one that is only green for them and shuts down every other movement. Um, for periods of time. And then they get that gives them that permissive movement, as you see here with that additional signal head being added to that overall signal. So that's one of the conditions that have been added to the PD. Um, let me go back to my list here. Um, the other thing that, that came up is the other, the other intersection at Bevel, um, where Pelican Bay accesses Bellevue, I'm sorry, at Bevel, um, there's no signal. Uh, and it's actually too short to That's meet the, the, the spacing. Gate. That's the West Gate. And so we went back to DOT in the conversations, and what DOT said is it doesn't meet our spacing requirement, but we're not opposed. Keep showing us data. And so what we've agreed to in the PD is come back as future phases move forward and keep looking at that intersection to see if and when a signal would be warranted so that DOT would support the installation of a signal. Um, I think one of the major things that we agreed to, and this is the one that sort of has come together over the past several weeks and, and the, the additional language that you've got um, that we agreed with um, with your staff uh, over the past several days uh, relates to the installation of a, uh, the future installation by the HOA of an, of an additional connection to Williamson. As part of the original plans for Pelican Bay, uh, there was actually a platted uh, private road that comes to Williamson. It was never constructed. The connection was never made. And so what we've added to the PD, you see here on, on point number three, is that when the next phase, the next 100,000 square feet of development moves forward within the Hillwood PD, um, provided the, the HOA has given us notice within 270 days of approval of the PD, which I think will be forthcoming shortly uh, based on the vote that came out uh, earlier this week, um, then a, a $500,000 contribution to the HOA to construct that um, uh, that driveway connection uh, will be made. And so what that will do, the county's been been working on, they've just issued an RFP for the design work on, on Williamson. That RFP includes, um, you know, the installation of, or the design of turn lanes and other connections um, in the Williamson, you know, four laning profile um, that will ac accommodate that, uh, that driveway connection. And if you heard the council's discussion yesterday, that has been moved up in priority. Um, I think Billy Wheeler uh, raised that point during the, the meeting yesterday to raise. Well, yep. actually the remaining money because they already had two, I think 2.7 from the fair share from right. Amazon and 2.5 from the aqua funds. And they're expecting it to cost about between seven and a half, approximately seven and a half million dollars. So they needed the remaining funding, which Billy brought it up, um, County Council Wheeler did. And Tad got up there and said that we do have the money, so he's bringing it back the next county meeting for the remaining funding. So right. we will have more than enough because originally that turning lane would have cost Pelican Bay HOA $565,000, right. which now our gate, and that's a question I liked on here, is our HOA. It says up to 500000 mm -hmm. so that pertains to anything that we need to that third gate. Correct. Anything that's, that's irrigation, in, included in that plant, the permit, and everything else for the improvements on that that just gate. Just wanted to make so. that clear. So, and our estimate so far is around three hundred thousand. The only thing I would have liked is to have that timeline. Uh, but I think it all will come around yeah. around the same time. Yeah, I, I think that at the end of the day, what we've been able to come to working with the with with your staff, with Commissioner Cantu, the residents out there in the county. Um, is a is a solution. Um, you've got 1,800 homes that currently have two access points, and uh, this is going to create another alternative. And so, um, I applaud everybody that's been involved, Commissioner Cantu, for for kind of leading the charge on this. 
uh, Scott Martin and, and the folks at Hillwood and, and uh, NASCAR for um, stepping up and being willing to, to uh, help create a solution here. So um, really the main things, the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll point out is we are also providing, you know, we talked about the importance of cross access. And when you look at this site plan um, and the county property to the, to the east that, you know, ultimately there'll be cross connectivity with. We've also provided uh, language in the PD that provides that cross connectivity to the property that's in the corner um, that's not within our ownership um, to, the, to the southwest of where that warehouse site is. So again, provides those opportunities for cross connection out there. So with that, I'll stop and see if anybody has any questions and otherwise, thank you. Great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Likewise. More. <laughs> Do we have any additional thank comments? I just want to say I think it's delightful you that y'all come to town hall meetings, but my residents are happy. We are, we do need a third gate, so this will help. I mean, and hopefully with the county doing this, it all came together. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm just delighted that everybody came together to resolve a problem and my co We do what we can. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, Mr. Jagger, did we need to read in um, in this um, the resolution for the PD the 30 days? And I, I think it's probably a good idea. You do yeah. have that passed around at the dais, but yeah. Mark, if you wouldn't mind summarizing the change. Do yeah, you, so, so you have a, a summary of the, the couple changes. Thanks for putting all of them for the record here. Um, in paragraph 6C uh, of the development agreement, we've got a, a couple of changes that are in the handout that you have before you. Uh, including that the exact location of the new driveway location based on the uh, what was dedicated under the old plats is at Wimbrel Drive, um, that there's a 270-day period from the approval of the development agreement this evening for notice to be provided to the city and to the developers of um, that the HOA has approved the connection of the driveway, which as you've heard- oh, uh, no, accepted the money. Accept, accepted okay. the, the money and-, yeah, and uh, We had to do all this- uh, HOA, Approved the setup sure within the development clear. agreement. <laughs> um, okay. And that, uh, that they'll provide reasonable documentation the county's willing to permit that, which we've also talked to the county as well and understand they have no issue with that. Um, that uh, when we begin moving forward, uh, with the next phase of development, we'll let uh, Pelican Bay know that, uh, let the city know that, uh, and then they will uh, provide us with copies within 180 days of their permits with the county for the construction, uh, their certified cost estimates, and then once we have that, we'll have 30 days to make that payment to the HOA so they can make the connection. So um, we will uh, would ask that you add that uh, as a condition of the approval to the development agreement in that section in the manner that's been in, uh, distributed to you. So. Perfect, thank you. With that, I'm here for any other questions, as any of our team. Oh, I'd just like to say thank you. Mm. I know it's been hard going back and forth, <laughs> and I'm gonna pay, but I was looking out for my residents at the same time. Yep. You did okay. a good job. Thank you. If I, I'm, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. All right, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Uh, I know that, uh, as she said, she was a bear to deal with, but she did her job. Man, I, I appreciate it. I honestly do. All right. Thank you. Good job. Okay, we're going to move on to item 9D. It's a development and administrative services cornerstone office park Twin Peaks proportionate fair share agreement. This is a resolution public hearing. A resolution approving the cornerstone office park Twin Peaks proportionate share master parent tract agreement between the city, cornerstone property investors LLC, the developer, and the county of Volusia providing providing for the developer to pay a proportionate fair share contribution to Volusia County in relation to the development of a 10,000 square foot restaurant generally located southwest of the intersection of Williamson Boulevard and LPJ Boulevard, authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute the agreement and providing an effective date. So move. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Cantu and a second from Commissioner Traeger. Do you have any questions or comments? All right, all those in... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I do have Jessica Gow here just for any questions. I'm okay. All right, no questions. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. So we're going to move on to our, our administrative items and we're going to jump back to item 8B, which was pulled for discussion under administrative items. 
So that is a resolution. A resolution accepting the affordable the affordable workforce housing linkage fee nexus study prepared by Strategic Planning Group, Inc., which provides an affordable housing plan with implementation recommendations and providing an effective date. So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? There's no second? Yeah. No, Henry. Oh, who made the motion? Commissioner mm -hmm. Reed? Yes. Second, Commissioner Henry? Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. You have several speakers? I have several speakers. Do you okay. want me to take the speakers uh, first? Or? Um, well, we can uh, take the seat speakers first. Okay. Our first speaker is Larry McDermott, and on deck is John Nicholson. Larry McDermott, 1016 Bel Air. I don't get up here to speak very often. Mm -hmm. I'm really kind of glad to see a funding mechanism for affordable housing. We actually looked at something like this was basically an impact fee back in 2010 during the, uh, an affordable housing uh, committee meeting. Okay. And so this is actually a way to address all across the country a national problem. Okay. I am asking the city commission at this point in time to look at the Nexus study for what it is. It is a proposed study, but I think that there should be some type of a, of a citizens committee um, made up of, of real estate professionals, citizens, um, uh, finance professionals, maybe the city, uh, the city finance director, those types of things to allow the study and the amounts proposed in that study to be reviewed because it's, there's other ways perhaps of delivering the same amount of money with a lot less of a adjustment for the impact fee. Just looking at the Amazon project, the Amazon fee, if it was involved in this, would be over $7.2 million according to the study. And that would be a really harmful thing uh, for that project. It may not need to be that much in order to get money to funds in the trust fund to help affordable housing in, th in this area. So I, I just caution the commission, approve the study tonight, but then perhaps look at a, a committee of citizens that uh, that can look and study the uh, the the amount of the of the charges because they look a little bit on the high side for this for this area anyway. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. Our next speaker is John Nicholson, and on deck is Sandy Murphy. Nicholson 413 North Cranberry Avenue. It was a very long read. It took a while. Did not understand most of it. However, what I did understand is it wasn't what we asked. The very first page said it was a linkage fee study. That's not what I remember asking for. I remember the uh, committee, this commission asking for a study on affordable housing. All right, this is not a study on affordable housing. This is a, a study on how we can implement a linkage fee. Okay, so um, the numbers here are quite disconcerting. At the very beginning, it says what we have the most of, we're not going to even talk about. We have a tremendous amount of HUD housing. People live in HUD housing, but they're not considered in this. Page after page after page, you have funding. How, how many people do not have money to afford the apartments, to afford the housing, et cetera? But yet, all the work that we've done over the last 40 years that I recall, all the money we poured into affordable housing is not in this report. 
So when you're, to when you're looking at the totality of what we can afford, if we take out that bottom rung, which we've provided the housing for already, they don't talk about the senior citizen units that we have, the Windsor, the Maley, the Catholic, the uh, Baptist, the Greek Orthodox, the Episcopal. They all have housing for senior citizens who have no money. It's not in this. What you really actually need to know is if you take away all that funding at the bottom, believe it or not, senior citizens don't have a lot of money. People on hot housing don't have a lot of money. People living in the dorms. We have dorms for Bethune-Cookman College. We have dorms for Emory Riddle. It's not in the study. When you take all of that, those are housing units. And they're not included in the study. How could you sit there and say we need X number of units if you're not looking at all the units that you have available? How can you sit there and say, well, there's so many people under $15,000 there's so many people on a $20,000 income. There's so many people, et cetera, et cetera. When we deliberately have the largest HUD housing in the county, it's going to lower all of our numbers. But yet over the last 40 years, we've been providing them a place to stay. So I'm asking that you look at this study extremely carefully. Look at the linkage fees. And I remember in the beginning, the mayor said linkage fees. Said others to talk. Thank you, sir. Your time has expired. There's 124 other possibilities. Your time's up. Our next speaker is Sandy Murphy, and on deck is Doyle Lewis. Good evening, Sandy Murphy, 136 Park Avenue. Since October of 2020, the story of affordable housing development in Daytona Beach has been one of missed opportunities. I looked back through my files today and was reminded that by the second meeting of that October 2020, the commission was poised to act. You had information on various types of programs you could adopt to incentivize affordable housing and on the need for workforce and affordable housing in the city. You have multiple examples of efforts in other communities. You had excellent documents from the planning staff and the legal staff talking about options and limitations. You literally had pages of links to examples of affordable housing facilitated by cities across Florida that could be used as a model. The only thing missing at that point was the nexus study required by Florida statute tying together the affordability gap and the costs of development. How many thousand housing units have been approved in this city since nothing was, where nothing was asked of developers in exchange for density bonuses and other waivers of LDC standards. How many thousands of units have been built since the commission voted in October 2020 for continuation of the resolution on a proposed LDC change to enable more affordable housing? That resolution didn't reemerge until April 2021 when it assumed the form of an RFP for the Nexus study. Now here we are more than a year later and the only progress that has been made on the affordable housing front is some additional flexibility in building accessory dwelling units. You can't allow the missed opportunities to continue. People will under, misunderstand the nexus studies. They'll equate the linkage fees with impact fees, not the same things. People will want to debate the details of this study. That, but there will always be room for disagreements on methodologies and therefore on the results. However, you have the opportunity now to take a first step forward after being stalled for so long. Please don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and accept this study. I hope that for the next commission meeting, you'll do your homework and come prepared to fill commissioner comments with next steps and deadlines for action. Not every commission action requires the nexus study. For instance, you could immediately take steps to establish a community land trust or to partner with an existing trust. You could run a workshop for people interested in building an ADU on their property to facilitate their next steps. You can continue to donate vacant city-owned lands to nonprofits that will build affordable housing where the affordability will be perpetuated through deed restrictions. If you haven't already, you can change the rules to permit construction of affordable housing in many, if not all, zoning districts in the city without the necessity and expense 
of a planned development process. So much time has been wasted. Please don't study anymore. Don't be frightened by opposition and don't fail your consistency. Thank you. Our final speaker is Doyle Lewis. Good evening, Commissioner, Mr. Mayor. Here I am again. I think this is a great thing. I hope you pass it. This is another step in the right direction. This has been going on for, for as far as I know, about 13 or 14 years, because that's when Daytona Beach and Volusia County, with their laws, somehow made me a homeless man, and I'm a home builder. <clears throat> there will always be an argument to go back and study some more. That just slows it down, and it costs you more money, because time is money. So go ahead and move forward. Every time you take a step back, you're probably going to make an accident. Somebody's going to make another excuse. This needs to be done now. There are people out there on the streets medicating themselves because they don't know what to do. They're homeless. They're stuck on the streets. Move forward. Stop letting people die in your city. There are other countries bringing in medications for them on the streets of the United States preying on these homeless people that are dying on the streets. The longer you wait, the more homeless people happen, the more people die, and a lot of them are young. You're losing your young workforce. Move forward with this. This is definitely a great thing to pass tonight or to study a little bit here tonight. But just remember every day, how many United States citizens pass away when you're thinking about you're making a mistake? This is an opportunity to have affordable housing for the real hardworking Americans that need your help. Thank you. My name is Doyle Lewis, Daytona Beach, USA. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. That was my final speaker for this item. Do we have any comments from the commission? We have a motion, we have a second to accept the... Uh, the only thing we're doing here tonight is accepting the Nexus study, correct? Okay, and staff will be bringing us back um, some things. This is only to accept it. staff will direction, how we move forward. We don't want um, this to be another year process, but what recommendations that came out of the study, we'll put together a plan of action to allow Thank, Thank you. Sorry about that. To allow, to allow for you all to vote on those um, items. Okay. So uh, two years ago, Ms. Murphy uh, mentioned that we started the process really in depth, right? As for the Nexus study. At that time, we, we made a commitment a commission and we said we would have um, an ad hoc committee of some sort made up of realtors, developers, builders, contractors, et cetera, chamber. We did not have that. We did not say we were going to do that. And they were going to weigh in on the results of the study that came forward and they would have an, we never said that. No, what we said was we gave them the opportunity to come down and voice their opinion, express themselves to the commission and that's what we said. We didn't agree to have a committee to study this. We have the study. No, no. That's not how I remember it at all. Okay. And I'm happy to go back and find out what that meeting was. The, the conversation I thought we had when something on the lines of when we had the study, they would have the opportunity to say, hey, and this is how it is reflected in our community. These are the repercussions we see. This is how we can adjust. What can we do to come to a, a reasonable kind of conclusion? That was the way I saw it. And I would like for us to actually go ahead and do that because my concern is once we adopt this, that the numbers presented in that study are going to be the numbers we accept. That is my concern. And I understand what we're saying here. I do understand what we're saying here. 
but the initial concern is the shudder that it sends to everybody else when we look at those numbers. I did send some documentation in to the city manager and the attorney where the numbers reflected from uh, Coconut Creek, Jupiter, uh, Winter Park as well, I believe, who did do a linkage and the rates that they were quoting in those areas. They're nothing, nothing to what we're being quoted here, not even close. Okay. So my concerns are, I'd like for our um, development community, our V-card community, the people who are doing all of these projects, even the affordable housing people to weigh in and say, okay, look, this is not gonna work, this is going to work, yes, we can do it. I also presented to you, um, uh, from somebody who works in the affordable housing market, a list of the increase, it's been a 23% increase in cost, labor costs to build right now. And there was a nice pictorial breakdown. Also right now, interest rates for affordable housing, super high. So we have to try to figure out a way to do this, but not also to stop progress at the same time. I mean, I, would li I like the ideas of exploring other options. I like the ideas of looking at a small footprint home. Those are things we can do now. I like the idea of looking at property that we have possibly out west that we can allot and start doing zoning changes that we can do en masse. But whatever we decide, it's still going to take two years almost to get anything going. And the, the need is now. I understand that. But we have to be responsible when we're doing this. I like the idea of looking at our properties out west, the land that we have, if we have any other free land, and saying, can we do immediate small home footprints as a development and put up 50, 60, 100 homes at one time? Those are my thoughts. So I'm not ready to, to do this without getting the weigh-in of um, the people who are directly impacted. So all those builders, they have families, they have employees, they have workers, they have electricians. It's going to impact that entire sphere. That's why I'd like the city manager to weigh in on those linkage fees because we also received that email up here. Um, Mr. And, Mayor, may I comment? Well, uh, just a second after Commissioner Cantu finishes, then we'll go to you, Commissioner. Okay. They, uh, All right, I can't hear Commissioner Cantu. Um, if you could weigh in by accepting this nexus study, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Um, by us accepting this nexus study, we're not actually accepting, or Mr. Jagger, whoever, we're not exactly accepting, correct? Those people. Okay. Yeah. Not, not exactly, not at all. Correct. <laughs> okay. No way, shape, or form. That's what I, that's it's, what I it, thought. And, and just, that's and, why and, I wanted cleared up here. Okay. Commissioner Reed? That was pretty much what I was going to say. Yeah. Are we going? Are we going to are we going to have uh, the developers, the builders, the area people that, going to have the opportunity to speak to this? That's a secondary question from what we're debating here. Our question is whether we want to accept it. But from my perception, and, and I'll, I'll answer that from my perception, they have a right to weigh in just like everyone else. We've had two years, two years of crickets. Before that, I said the same thing two years ago crickets until it's time for us to make a decision. Then when it's time for us to make a decision, there will be a loud voice of people who will come here, most of whom do not live in Daytona Beach, most of whom are profiting from Daytona Beach. The people that I represent need affordable housing, and I will not wait another minute, another day, another hour to start to do something about it with my vote. I'm not waiting anymore. I concur. I want to vote, and I want to move on, and I want staff to start bringing some ideas to us based on, we don't accept the numbers. It's not about the numbers. If you do affordable housing, we're not going to make it punitive. It's each, the developer has to be made whole. So these scare tactics, and using these outrageous, outlandish, the biggest number that you can find to make it something to be afraid of, let's get some courage for the people who are falling in and out of home, uh, homes daily. Sure, but the no homeless. <clears throat> didn't, didn't interrupt. So I have my position, I think, and, and I'll give the mic back to you, but my position is let's vote on this, let's allow staff to start bringing things in. If those people who wrote that letter want to pin another letter and start sending things in to staff, 
That's on them, but it's time for us to do something. But the scare tactic number came from the report itself. That's the issue I'm having. I have no problem with affordable housing. I have brought forth affordable housing concepts. I'm working in that direction. We are, as a commission, working in that direction. The concept is just, you know, the, those numbers that we have in our own report are a bit off-putting. We don't live by those numbers, and that's, we've already said that. And there's nothing that we're deciding tonight that we won't have an opportunity to vet further in the future. Let's make a decision as to whether we want staff to start working. I know the city attorney has things that we discussed two years ago that we were ready to move with. And they, it only required this as a procedural part of the process. So, uh, so in my research, before I finish, in my research what I found fascinating was that there were some cities which I sent to the attorney that did not have a nexus report and they still moved forward. And that was some, and I thought, okay, so it's not mandatory to do that. You can just go ahead and start affordable housing concepts. Well, we've been doing some, but there are some that require a nexus study. Okay, so we want to have the full gamut of opportunities available, at least that we can choose from <laughs> if we choose. But there's nothing tonight being decided. It has to come back before us. And then once they lay it out, if you don't want to support it, then we don't support it. But I can tell you. I know the things that I'm supporting because I've studied it. I already, I already know. Yes, yes, sir, Commissioner Strickland. I'm on board with you. It's time we do something and, and move forward mm -hmm. with this. Uh, we uh, worry too much about making certain sectors whole and not near enough about our residents and especially our, our less fortunate residents that don't have enough income to to afford decent decent housing. So I. I'm with you. Let's vote for this. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I call for the vote. One, one second. Commissioner Henry wants to weigh in, and we'll move to it. So two years ago, I made a plea to, this com to the commission at that time to really get serious about affordable housing. And um, I felt like we had not, as Sandy said, done enough. Um, which is where we started moving in the direction of um, accessory dwelling units, which was something that I felt we could do immediately to imme have an immediate impact on um, affordable housing. And I was told that we needed this nexus study in order to move forward with our all of our affordable housing plans. We got the nexus study. I'm, I'm back again making a plea with you all. We got to move and we got to move fast. I'm, I, it, it's going to be in the next, in the next six to seven months, we're going to be in dire straits and we've got to move on affordable housing. We have the opportunity right now to do that, to continue moving forward. Uh, there are things that I would like to present in the next meeting that um, from the Florida housing, um, Florida affordable housing coalition that um, that they suggested that we could do and implement. And there are a myriad of things that we can do and we can implement. And so uh, we just needed this Nexus study. It's here, and I'm ready to rock and roll. All right. I appreciate the fact that in that Nexus study, we had so many tools. And I'm liking the idea of being able to use multiple tools in the toolkit that they offered. OK. All right, we have a. Just use just one, and we don't have to go with all of those numbers. That's really just a base, and then we move from the base. We move mm -hmm. from there. All right, we have a motion. We have a second. We have a call for the vote. Uh, we'll. Do, does anyone have any other comments? All right. Let's get going. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries seven zero. Okay. Now, uh, before we move on from that item, since we're on uh, affordable housing, well, I guess I'll do it during my commission comments. I'll come back to it. Uh, okay. Proceed, please. Okay, we're gonna move on to item 10A. This is Development Administrative Services Planning Division, Karis Voluntary Annexation, and this is an, or an introduction of an ordinance. An ordinance annexing into the city 
parcel containing 67.5 plus or minus acres of land generally located west of Williamson Boulevard and east of Interstate 95 and approximately 0 0.3 miles south of the Williamson Boulevard and Bellevue Avenue intersection at 1094 South Williamson Boulevard. Redefining the territorial boundaries of the City of Daytona Beach to include the property. Redesignating the boundaries of Zone 4 of the City of Daytona Beach to include the property. Repealing all warrants or parts of warrants in conflict herewith and providing an effective date. And the public hearing and final action is September 21st. I'd just like to make a comment on that one. Okay. Um, actually, that's a great project. I did go to um, a meeting on that and a lot of my Pelican Bay residents actually went as well and they didn't have a problem with that. So thank you. Okay. okay. So we're gonna move on to item 10B. It's the Development Administrative Services Planning Division, Karis Plan Development General. This is a rezoning, and this is an introduction of an ordinance. An ordinance amending the zoning map of the Land Development Code to rezone 67.5 plus or minus acres of property generally located west of Williamson Boulevard, east of Interstate 95, and approximately 0 0.3 miles south of Williamson Boulevard, and Bellevue Avenue intersection 1094 South Williamson Boulevard, from Volusia County A2, which is rural agriculture, to PDG Plan Development General, approving the Karis Planned District Agreement, authorizing industrial development of the property, primarily intended to accommodate warehouse storage and distribution, limited office and transportation related uses, subject to certain conditions, authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute the agreement, and repealing all warrants or parts of warrants and conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. And the public hearing and final action is September 21st. Move on to item 10C, it's a finance department, ordinance amending master lease agreement with Truist Bank and FLC for the purchase of 40 police vehicles. This is also an introduction of an ordinance. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Daytona Beach, Florida, authorizing the execution of schedule of property number four to the master equipment lease purchase agreement with Truist Bank, sponsored by the Florida League of Cities, Inc., authorizing the lease purchase financing of, of the acquisition and installation of certain equipment herein described, authorizing the execution and delivery on acquisition fund agreement, authorizing the execution of such other documents as may be necessary to complete the transactions completed hereby and providing an effective date. And the public hearing and final action on this item is August 17th. Okay, and we'll move on to item 10D. This is, okay, this is the legal department settlement agreement of the special warranty deed. Yes, if I may, Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, uh, before we get into the specifics of the proposed settlement agreement, I want to take a step back and sort of outline how we got here today. And then I, I know the attorneys for the property owners are here, and, and also Ms. Metz is here on behalf of several citizens. Um, but if you'll recall, back in July uh, 6th, uh, this came back to the commission on a motion to reconsider. Uh, there was lengthy discussion, and ultimately the motion to reconsider passed, and the item was continued with specific direction from the commission to go back to the uh, citizen's attorney, Ms. Metz, and to the property owner's attorney at Cobb Cole and see if we could address some of the concerns that have been raised by the citizens with regard to uh, access to the river approach. Um, we did have a Zoom meeting on uh, July 14th that involved Ms. Metz and the property owner's attorneys and also the city manager. Um, we made a substantial headway at that meeting uh, when we left that meeting, Ms. Metz uh, continued negotiating with Cobb Cole to um, further address some concerns with regard to the environmental restrictive covenants. Uh, we've exchanged multiple drafts since that time. The latest draft uh, was actually uh, transmitted to the commission this afternoon, So, uh, but it has been a constant effort. And I believe the draft that you have before you tonight addresses many of the concerns from the citizens. Um, some of the concerns that you'd heard over the, the months uh, that we've been addressing this is uh, there was some discomfort on behalf of the citizens that the rules that were going to be imposed on the river approach were kind of set in stone in this agreement. That language has been revised so that those uh, park rules, if you will, can be changed by the commission at their discretion. Um, likewise, there was some concern from the citizens, from the citizens about whether or not there would be a pathway to the river and, and how that connection would be made uh, through the mangroves uh, so that they could have access for swimming, kayaking, et cetera. So this... Uh, Current draft of agreement has um, actually a spot, a location, more or less in the center of the river approach where a pathway would be built by the city within a one-year period. And um, the city would be responsible for obtaining uh, FDEP approvals 
to uh, make that connection to the waterway. This current agreement has uh, very specific language that um, uses in addition to pedestrian uses would be allowed, uh, such as fishing and kayaking and swimming, all that's expressed in here where it wasn't expressed before. So I believe we have made uh, some strides. Uh, I will tell you that from my conversations uh, with uh, Cobb Cole, the attorneys there, and Ms. Metz, uh, they may have some additional language they would like to add to this, and they have asked to speak to you before I get into the specifics of the agreement which was provided to you this afternoon. Okay, let us uh, engage in that. Uh... Um, we're here before you today because while, um, as, as Mr. Jagger said, the um, current iteration is much, much closer than it was before today, um, we have spoken and there are still a few um, items in there. Just the language of it is either unclear or um, needs a little tweaking. So what we have talked about and we're both comfortable with and our clients are both comfortable with is asking for the commission to put this to the next um, meeting so that we can bring before you something that all three parties um, have finally come to an agreement on. The, um, the goal is we've already made some of those revisions. Mr. Snapdialer will be getting those hopefully tomorrow as will Mr. Jagger. Uh, from this latest iteration that the public was given at about 4.30, I think, and that you received today. So we think it would be best for the commission to put this to the next agenda item. Mr. Jagger would then have essentially a week with us to finalize that, get it back on the agenda for the next time, and hopefully everybody can move forward. So do we have a I would like to, to make continue? a motion to that effect. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any questions or comments from the commission? Mayor, if I could add to that, if in order for us to get this on the agenda and be published, you know, with when it's normally put out to the public, I'd request that we have all of the revisions from the attorneys by next Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, that's our um, understanding. That way, you know, there's plenty of opportunity for the public to see um, the item uh, with the regular agenda. That, yes, agree. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries, 7-0. Legal minds and semantics, you guys enjoy yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that was our final item on the agenda. Okay, that concludes our agenda. At this time, we will hear from the uh, members of the commission. I'm not sure who would have been first. What's that? Uh, who's who was first tonight? That was wasn't that added on to the consent? consent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was the first speaker from the commission? Traeger. Commissioner Traeger. At this time, we will hear from you. Went to the neighborhood nights out meeting. City neighbor nights out meeting. Really great after two years. Everybody seemed to have fun. I know I did, and can't wait for next year. Amen to that. Commissioner Strickland? Uh, I have a couple things here. Uh, first one, maybe the second one. One of them's going to be a little con uh, controversial. First, I want to thank uh, um, <coughs> Mr. Morris and, uh, and Rose and uh, Dennis for meeting with me yesterday and, and updating me and explaining to me how the special festival permit uh, that everybody was upset about over near Seabreeze transpired. I knew when I got a call 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, something was off the track. Um, so I appreciate them meeting with me and, and explaining what happened and um, expediting taking care of that in a positive way for that neighborhood, considering how hard we had worked with the noise issues and and that sort of thing with the the uh, restaurants and the uh, uh, merchants over there um, I would also like to to ask that in the future when we have permits that come in people come in and apply that once the permit is recorded given a number if it's in a, a um, zone where we've had previous issues with noise and things like that, 
that the commission, as well as the mayor and the city manager, uh, be notified by uh, staff rather than us just uh, kind of getting ambushed by it with rumors and that sort of thing. I know there's no need to talk about it until the application has been filed and accepted. But at that point, I would like for us to be uh, notified uh, so that we could uh, be aware of what's going on in, in our zone and, and be good representatives, if you will, of our residents. All right. Yeah. My other thing. Mr. Strickland, I'll just say that um, Mr. Morris provided me with a memo from him um, as members of his team that that could be an administrative thing that once the process goes through, an uh, email could be sent out to all elected officials. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this one right here might not make people so happy. Uh, we, <laughs> we've never allowed citizen comment on first reading. Now we don't vote on first reading. We just... No action required, we just read it. And then we move on, and then two weeks later, we come back in, uh, and the residents don't get a chance to chime in until after we've made a motion and a second, and then we ask for comments. I would suggest, so that our residents would feel like that we truly represent them up here, that once the initial reading, that first reading is done, to allow citizen comments, because I think if we allow citizen comments at that time, it'll give us an opportunity to maybe um, have some compromise between what's being asked for and what makes the neighborhood happy. Um, I know that um, some are not in favor of that. Um, we might have to stay here a few minutes too long. Uh, but I, I think if we're going to represent our residents properly, we need to give them an opportunity to be heard. And, and uh, that shouldn't hurt us too much. If, uh, if that's something we could consider in the future. Um, I know um, with the quasi-judicial stuff, we have to get uh, our city, city attorney over there to weigh in. But um, anyway, just some thought. Uh, to give our residents an opportunity to be heard more than once, more than right at the last minute before we vote. That's it for me. I'll just say that in my opinion, the residents, um, not the residents, <clears throat> but I, I wasn't in favor of the way the adjustment was made because I felt like the commission <clears throat> should still be making comments if they had a problem with something, but it that just nothing now. So I, I, I and I, I feel like I'm all for hearing from residents, but if the commission doesn't have comments, I'll just hear from the residents the way I normally do, either through email or a phone call, because uh, I, I, I don't like the way that it is. But that's just me, Commissioner May. Um, I. Uh... I'm looking forward to seeing how the development moves forward, the Brentwood project for the affordable home community. I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. I keep track of it. Um, I really want us to consider land that we have, big plots of land for small footprint homes, maybe out west, close to First Step Shelter. Along with that, I was thinking about transportation, getting people to come to be brought back to and from work and home in between those things. This past week, I went to the... Um, Schnebley Center, and Miss Dixie Mergazi was doing a very nice children's program there, so thank you so much. Free after-school program during the summer. I enjoyed going and watching and watching them do the thing with the kids. Definitely a need to have more um, enrichment activities for the young people. It was very worthwhile. It was a worthwhile experience for me. And then also I met with the Kiwanis Club, and they do a lot of really, really good work with us. And I just wanted to say thank you publicly. They are one of the oldest, if not the oldest, organization in Central Florida as a nonprofit, and they have supported the city of Daytona Beach for many, many years. So thank you very much for that continued support. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Cantu. Yes. Um, on behalf of the Veteran Museum and myself, Commissioner Henry, we'd like to say thank you for the new flagpole at the Veteran Museum. It looks <laughs> wonderful and much needed. Um, um, let's see, Friday, um, we are having a Purple Heart ceremony at 9 o'clock on the steps of City Hall. 
Um, for all our veterans out there, we will have DAV Chapter 84 service officers out there if anyone has any questions, so bring your DD-214s. Um, we do have quite a lot of organizations that will be participating with information. The Military of the Purple Heart, Chapter 316, the Marine Corps League of Daytona, the VVA, Chapter 1048, um, the service officers from DAV, the DAV 84 Auxiliary, Ormond Strong, Patriot Guard Riders, the Vet Center, Humana, Halifax Health, and I know I'm missing one, but sorry, whoever it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> and also the mayor, after the ceremony, there will be a ribbon cutting um, that the mayor has a special. Um, dedication for our Purple Heart recipients. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you, Mayor. And that's about it. All right, thank you. Commissioner Henry. So National Night Out, a couple of my kiddos and myself attended National Night Out and National Night Out was amazing. Um, Chief and all of the planners, the city workers, the police officers, it was wonderful to get to see children interact positively with the police officers in their community. They had balloon races where the, the officers were racing the kids and they had to go down, sit on the balloon and come back and to see those children happy and smiling and interacting with the officers in their community was amazing. And the fire department did a wonderful job. They had great activities for the children. Um, it must have cost a pretty penny because the Kona ice machine was there and you could get your free Kona ice machine, ice, icy, and those things are expensive. <laughs> you could get hot dogs, hamburgers, food. They raffled off bicycles. I think they raffled off like eight or nine bicycles. They, they um, had the 360 camera and I got on there with the city manager and we did our little dance on the 360 camera and with the police <laughs> chief. It was really fun. So um, they had bounce houses and so it just was a wonderful experience. Uh, and, and everyone in the community that came out, it was just great to see people back out and active in the community. And then we hosted movie night at the park where we showed Cinderella. Um, and it was a beautiful night. The weather was nice. There were no mosquitoes, but in case there were, we had, um, our city workers had um, mosquito spray on the table you could use. They had hula hoops. They had, uh, the movie was really nice. They had the real hot dogs, the real big, thick ones. <laughs> <laughs> And people were coming up to me, they were like, oh, y'all use the real hot dogs, the big, thick hot dogs. So it was really nice. The um, attendees could have as much candy as they wanted, as much popcorn as they wanted, drinks, food. And so when you think about it, it was just a wonderful night because if you go to the movie theater, you're going to spend way more. And everything was free. Um, which reminds me and brings me to my next Point, and that is Showtime in the Parks, sponsored by your Zone 5 City Commissioner, Danette Henry. The gates will open at 7.30 p.m. Movies will start at 8.30 p.m. And this, I mean, on Friday, August 12th in Suburbia Park, which is 700 Heinemann Street, we will be showing Space Jam, a new legacy. Um, thank you. Um, we will be showing Space Jam, A New Legacy, so you can bring your lawn chairs, your blankets. At the last one, everyone had their blankets, their sleeping bags, pillows. It was so nice, so do that again. Bring the children out. It is a great opportunity prior to them returning to school that next week. It is a great last hurrah, and I would like to see you there. We'll be going around. We have these beautiful door hangers that we're going to be hanging on the doors to remind the parents to bring the children out to movie nights in the park. And that is my final comment. Thank you. Hey, Mayor, before you go, well, before Commissioner Reed, I do want to say thank you. There was a town hall meeting. Um, for the public, the mayor participated, um, our Daytona Beach chief, our two captains, um, and, and um, 
our new, what is it, assistant manager for public works. Okay, Andy Holmes. And I'd just like to tell every, all you guys thank you. It helped solve a lot of problems in my community um, for you guys showing, for all of them showing up, so. Good meeting. Uh, Commissioner Reed. Yes, sir. I'd just like to share with you all that on last Thursday evening, the um, Volusia League of Cities at our dinner, we featured Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, and it was a beautiful ceremony. I'd like to thank Commissioner Traeger, our city manager, and Assistant City Manager Betty Goodman for joining me that evening. We had a presentation by Dr. Tasha Yeoman uh, in regards to the life of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune and how she impacted Volusia County, particularly since it was the Volusia League of Cities. And then we had Nancy Lohman to share with us the unveiling of the statue in um, Statutory Hall. They were actually, there was a small group of them that were actually allowed to be in Statutory Hall to see the statue coming out of the crate. And we saw that video, it was very moving. We also got a sneak preview of what's gonna happen on the 18th. And you're gonna be just as pleased then as well. I'd like to encourage my fellow city um, commissioners to join me sometime for a Volusia League of City um, meeting. It's something that we have presentations of all sorts that educate us and prepare us uh, in our various roles. And Traeger and I are the main commissioners that come, the mayor comes, and the city manager comes. But I'd like to see some city, city um, commissioners there sometime as well. We do have a traveling trophy for the cities that have the most representation. And we have not won in all the years that I've been on this board. Hint, hint. Also, <laughs> I'd like to just say... Um, <laughs> uh, that has just been a plum pleasing pleasure to join you all this evening virtually. Make it a great day. What's left of it? All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank oh, you. Oh, one more thing. Yes, ma'am. One more thing. Next week, the city manager, the mayor, and myself will be representing us at the Florida League of Cities. So, see, this thing, it goes to your local commission, then it goes to your state. There's also a national League of Cities. So Daytona is going to be represented. In fact, next week I am facilitating a workshop um, during the Florida League of Cities. And um, I know the mayor and the manager are joining me there. And the three of us, previous city manager and current city manager, and my mayor, always go. So you all, let's go and grow so that we know how to better serve our citizens. That completes my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner's putting pressure on the mayor. He, he, he has a really busy life. And... Uh, like her, I, I work another job that really pushes me. But I want to be there. Florida League of Cities is great. It's a great uh, opportunity to fellowship and learn uh, what's taking place in other communities and just uh, see best practices. Um, so I'm hoping that I can continue with that scheduled uh, trip. <clears throat> uh, great meeting tonight. I would like to ask staff this week, we had an issue to come up with two of our parcels, or several, a couple of our parcels, surplus parcels that we have. Um, they were up for auction. And these were parcels that I think would have been better suited in the hands of affordable housing. Um, so what I would like for us to do is to figure out a way that we can have a policy that puts these parcels in the hands of an affordable builder first, gives them an opportunity first before we, now, and don't get me wrong, probably would have made money off the parcels, right? We're going to make money. The city was going to make maybe, I think the bid was up to maybe $20,000 on one of the parcels. But what ends up happening is, Developers take the best parcels that the city owns. And we want our parcels, if, if affordable housing is truly our priority, and we have been doing it, I would like for us to develop a policy that says that all city parcels are first mm -hmm. given to affordable developers. Mm -hmm. And we would put a caveat in that that says that if they don't develop on that parcel within a certain amount of time, it reverts back to us for us to maybe give to a better affordable development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because not all affordable 
developers are even or equal. Mm -hmm. Some do a better job than others. Mm -hmm. And those that are building quicker and need lots more, mm -hmm. those are the ones that we want to do more business mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I would like for us to come back with some policy. Do you all mm -hmm. yes. concur with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what mm -hmm. about um, Metropolitan Housing? Are they? They're, they're part of the groups that, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. They are one of the groups that have um, submitted for that we're going to be um, providing. Um, and what, what the, the two properties you have, um, we, we did bring those for a bidding process to, and to, to um, it was a resolution, but most of our properties we're going to try to get out, but we will bring a policy back that says any of our parcels um, that you all want to go out, if you want to vote on that to go to affordable groups, we will do that. Also, when we do bid out property, we could put in there that, hey, these, we want them, if we want to, um, people want to bid on, we can say you have to build an affordable project if that's what we go out with. So those things will work with the um, city attorney and redevelopment to bring something back to you all. Okay. All right. we've, we've been using a new model, by the way, in our contracts uh, so that now instead of having a reverter, if they don't develop it for affordable housing, we actually don't pass title until the house is built. Yeah. And then we require in there, of course, that they rent to qualifying households. Yeah. So, um, so we make sure that the property is improved before they even get title to it. But we got to have some time limit on it. Right? Generally, there'd be um, a period for which it'd have to be held out for portability. Okay. All right. Great. Um, that concludes my comments for tonight, uh, Mr. Manager. Yeah. Just wanted to to just say that, um, as you all know. Um, I promoted Andy Holmes to the Director of Public Infrastructure and Capital Projects um, for the organization to look at all of our, uh, I think it's good, y'all clap. Um, um, that, and, and, uh, yeah. no, uh, Andy has truly demonstrated in, in the past year um, uh, as an individual that I would want on my senior leadership team as we guide um, the organization. And he's going to really focus on um, our capital projects and transportation, and he'll join the team with me and Mr. Morris, um, um, Ms. Goodman, and, and, and Drew as we try to map out something, and we'll be bringing back. We meet on Monday morning, and we'll be submitting some dates to the um, commission um, for us to go ahead and do goal-setting retreats as, all, as well as um, focusing on um, um, selecting our efficiency committee. So Andy um, was promoted to an assistant city manager, and Mr. Waller is going to take the public works direct position. Um, also, Jenny um, Nazak has been bothering me, and I've been bothering her um, for uh, a couple of days. Um, we're going to do a ride um, with um, Mr. Morris. He doesn't know this. He's going to be riding with us on a bicycle. Um, we, <laughs> yeah, he has two of them. Um, our goal is going to be trying to figure out working with, and Andy also, um, Andy rides his bike and walk, how we can better connect our sidewalks, our, 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 our multimodal transportations, um, tree coverings and communities. So we're going to find citizens also who want to join us on this, this ride. So we'll put something out. Um, the mayor may um, ride with us a couple of places. Uh, but we're really just trying to figure out how do we connect working with um, our, our Votran, working with citizens to connect our, our, our transportation, sidewalks, tree coverings, natural resources discussion. And so, Jenny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And since I do have two people now that ride themselves, Mr. Morris and um, Mr. Holmes, I'll join you. I have an electric bike, so I can, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to paddle no to LPGA. I can promise you that. Um, also, I, the Legion Service football kickoff, August the 20th. At Municipal Stadium, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. is free. Um, the mayor's going to kick off the um, – um, no, you're going to do the run. He, he's not kicking, but um, we want some other commissioners to come out and participate. We've got high school students coming out, marching bands, and really it's just a kickoff of the football season. It's not a football team, but you can, you can tailgate. You can come in with your car, $10, set up a tent. You can cook hot dog, hamburger. Um, you can have food in the parking lot. But inside the stadium, we will be selling food. But it really is a fun day. Um, we've got three bands that pay pop music, country, and rock. Um, we hope you all will come out on Saturday, August 28th, and participate. And the mayor will be there at 3 p.m. to um, hopefully um, let the students know that someone that's 45 um, can still do some good running on, on the football field. Used, used to be 45. Oh, he's a 45 plus 10. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not, not quite. Yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> the Public Art Advisory Board, please um, sign up for that. Look for that. We're trying to make sure we get some names that we can bring back to the commissioners. Um, and that concludes my report.
Thank you, Mr. Manager. And I must say, the manager's report is really thick. Really thick. Which really means there are a lot of things taking place in the city. Good things. And we need to continue. All of us need to be connected through social media, yeah. sharing, communicating with our networks so that people will know about the activities and things that we're doing in Daytona Beach. It is, as I say, or would say to my students, a great day to be among the living and a great day to be a resident in Daytona Beach. At this time, we will hear from our residents. Mayor, before we start that, oh, my, um, I, I do have one legal issue for the commission. Um, so the time is run again for the city attorney's office to represent uh, the First Step Shelter. Uh, the last extension, which I think we're on about number nine now, uh, was for three months. And so at this point, I'll need your approval to continue representing them. If you'd like to appoint me indefinitely, that's fine with me. Yeah, let's uh, just but, do that, please. Okay, fine. I will draft Until a resolution to that effect for your signature, but I will need a motion and a second. So move. Second. So move. Thank you all. Thank and you all. Public comment, if there is any. In public comment. John must not be here. Okay, we pay him okay. so well. Motion, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries 7-0. I will say he does a magnificent job, uh, but it is an example, a further example of our commitment to the shelter. Um, and by the way, two months ago, the shelter had put 20, the shelter placed 25 citizens in permanent housing in one month. Where did they find the housing? Where did they find the housing? I don't know, mm. but they did it. Uh, and, and that's going to be harder and harder. Um, so. Um, that was that was the biggest because we we have a goal of a hundred per year, so and that's that's lofty. We we've been achieving that, but uh, to do 25 in a month, amazing. And for the record, in February we will have a mayor's gala to raise funds for a first step. We recently um, announced the uh, chief title title sponsor will be John Hamlin and Associates uh, to the tune of $25,000. Wow. So that's well off to a great start. Okay. All right. Um, we'll hear from residents at this time. Okay. Our first speaker is Frederick Brown, and on deck is John Nicholson. Bye-bye. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Good evening, Frederick Brown, 1508 Crescent Ridge, Daytona Beach. Um, I know you postponed the 10D item, and uh, I'm glad you did that. And unfortunately, I only get three minutes to speak every, every meeting, because there's a great many projects and other things that I'd like to contribute my ideas to the city, especially in the areas of affordable housing and some other uh, areas such as the rec center, I'd certainly like to move on. But there's some key sticking points I have with what's transpired at Bridgeport Heights. It was public land, deemed public land forever. And I know the mayor realizes a mistake was made, but the problem is it wasn't just the mayor's mistake. It was a lot of mistakes made. And as I've spoke to you before, a lot of those mistakes, including staffs, were predicated on false and misleading information and information without supportive facts because, of course, it wasn't correct information. When you look at the properties involved here, the two owners who both have famous names here in the city, one of them, of course, was related to the mayor at the time, and I know you've heard this, but they were able to do construction projects on their properties that far exceeded what the permits said. They were able to build illegal driveways into public land during that period. And the sad part that the biggest sticking point I have with this pending agreement is the fact that they want to condone those illegal driveways. 
Now, the city has a whole series of laws and codes and whatnot, and if you don't start following those laws and codes and enforcing them, what do they mean? You have a magistrate that bangs a gavel and gets $1,000 every time they, they bang it. Well, yet two illegal drivers were allowed to put into public land that was deemed public forever, and nobody batted an eye. Why? Because they were famous names. And unfortunately, the law firm that represented them spent a great deal of time with city employees and commissioners. And as the letter, if you read the opening letter, it says, as you're aware of, we have the pleasure of representing them, which means they've already talked to you. They spent a great deal of time lobbying with our city attorney. They spent a great deal of time lobbying with the city manager about pushing this thing through. And as we've pointed out, it was done under the darkness of COVID, back when citizens weren't allowed to speak. It was never made public. It was never posted. No one knew about it until after it had blown through in six seconds on May, that dark day in May of 2020. This has got to stop. Mr. Mayor, I appreciate the fact that you've taken some, uh, some accountability for the fact it was a mistake. We need to fix all the things that led up to this mistake. And I support helping out. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is John Nicholson, and on deck is Ricky Scott. John Nicholson, 413 North Granbury Avenue. Uh, somebody got the impression that I did not support the um, Nexus study. The Nexus study was a... Um, a tool in your toolbox. It enabled you to go further with other things, all right? It was also given the impression that we've done nothing for the last two years. But we have. I've already said about what the city has done with affordable housing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you recall, um, Cornelia May brought forward the tiny homes, and she's been pushing that and pushing that. That also is affordable housing. You had Stacy come up with the ADUs that you passed. That is affordable housing. Uh, Danette has two, th two or three items that uh, she wanted. I haven't heard about them yet, but that also could be done. At the end of your study, there's 124 possible things that you could do immediately. All right? Well, not all of them immediately, but most of them. All right? So I'm asking you to look at that section. I also agree with Larry that we need professionals to look at the linkage study. All right? Several years ago, 20, 15 years ago, we had a 27% tax increase. And what the city did was it called together the CFOs of our major corporations. NASCAR was here, um, Brown and Brown, um, Glenn Ritchie's group. Those CFOs got together to determine what the city should do. They were professionals. We should do the same thing. This linkage study is gonna give a lot of money but it could also do a lot of damage. So I'm asking you to think about having a group of professionals that know what they're doing. Because basically you and I don't. We're not bankers. We don't do construction. We don't know what happens when X, Y, and Z, un un um, what do they call it? Unintended consequences of what we do. So I'm asking you to think about having the professionals that know what they're doing, the realtors, to come in and say, if you do X, Y, and Z, this is what's gonna happen. The Lincoln study, the faith group wants 10%, all right? 10% is like $16,000 or $15,000 on a house, plus over 20 years, that's another $30,000 or $40,000. So a homeowner has to acquire a fifty dollars or $60,000 addition to their house with a linkage study, uh, linkage uh, fees. So you have to look at what are the unintended consequences. I think if uh, the other cities are doing one, two, and three percent, we should do the same, one, two, and three percent, because they could absolutely afford it, all right? We cannot afford to screw this up. We have to do it right, and I'm asking you to do it right. Our next speaker is Ricky Scott, and is Dan Stone still in the audience? Yeah. Then our next speaker is Marjorie Johnson. Mm 
Good evening. I sent an email to the city commissioners. You know, since I only have three minutes, so I'll get right to it. I'd like to submit a proposal to construct a Little League baseball field or rename an existing Little League field in the inner city, in the inner city to honor Major League World Series champion baseball player and Daytona Beach native Edwin Ed Douglas Charles. Mr. Charles was born in Daytona Beach, Florida, April 29, 1933. He played Little League Baseball in the sand lots and parks of the inner city where he honed his skills. Mr. Charles was originally signed by the Boston Braves in 1952. He spent eight years in the Braves farm system in the still segregated Deep South. He was traded to the Kansas City Athletics prior to the 1962 season. In 1967, the Athletics traded Mr. Charles to the New York Mets. In 1968, he led the Mets in home runs with 15. In 1969, he was the starting third baseman for the Miracle Mets team that unexpectedly won the World Series. He finished his career with a 263 batting average, 86 home runs, and 421 RBI. Mr. Charles is a legend in the black community who has yet to receive the proper recognition he deserves for his achievements. It is long past due to right this egregious wrong. Mr. Charles unfortunately passed away March 15, 2018 at the age of 84. A request to consider honoring this hometown hero is humbly submitted to the mayor and the city commissioners. And I was personally involved uh, three years ago in contacting the Daytona Tortugas to solicit a uh, donation to construct a field, uh, Kelly Field across from Pine Haven Project to honor Mr. Charles. And they agreed to make the donation. However, the pandemic came along and everything was kind of put on hold. I was informed that I guess that money is now back on the table and they have uh, submitted a donation. I understand also that uh, Derbyshire has some new baseball and softball fields out there and I'd like to re uh, request that one of those fields be named to honor Mr. Ed Charles, a native of Daytona and a World Series champion, a local uh, hero. I'd also like to know uh, who I need to talk to as far as doing a follow-up to uh, this request, or would somebody be contacting me, or do I need to do a follow-up to talk to somebody else regarding this request? Ms. Goodman, Ms. Goodman. Goodman, Assistant City Manager Betty Goodman. Okay, so that's who I would need to. But, do. but I, I agree with him. I agree a hundred percent, as I told you when you sent the email. Okay. Uh, that is that is uh, almost just like a no-brainer. And I wish that we had done it before he passed. Yes. I knew him and knew his family and admired him. And I think our children should know his story. As you said in the letter, he was a part of the Jackie Robinson movie. That too, yes. And he, he, he was a boy that was depicted in the movie. He was depicted and, in uh, the movie 42, yes. Yes. And so I, Ms. Goodman will call you. And I, I just think we ought to find something that is appropriate and do it in a way that not just a name, but it needs to, we need a marker, we need people to be able to see and understand what he achieved. And I did speak with uh, Keith Willis mm -hmm. about it, he's aware of it, and uh, he, he's on board with it. Okay, so, right. Ms. Goodman will, will call, or will reach out to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Marjorie Johnson, and on deck, is Deborah Kirkland still in the audience? Or Mark LaForge? They left. Then our next speaker after Ms. Uh, Johnson will be Libby Coleman. Marjorie Johnson, 122 South Street Street. I'm here tonight to say that uh, we don't have access to our city officials, uh, and that's a big problem. I have something on social media about it. Uh, when I spoke in the past, when Chisholm was here, and it's on to two or three sites, and the people can see it. And I feel that this is a disgrace. That in the past, we always had access to our mayor, our city commissioner, and, 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 and everyone that was up here. You're getting paid to do your job. I think it's a disgrace because I'm getting a lot of complaints from people that's saying that you need to bridge the gap to let these residents come in here and meet with these people and answer their questions. Uh, Ms. Reese, then it's on social media, she lied and said she was going to set up the meeting. That was in 2015, and she never did. So 
We need to have access to everybody who's getting paid. We need to be able to talk with these people. And we, just like you took our minutes away and took us out of the meeting, I had to get up here and get them back in the meeting. That was a miscarriage of justice. And you won't give it a pledge of allegiance to a flag and say justice for all, but that's not justice. And another thing I'm concerned about is the fact that you took away some of our public property and gave it away when we weren't here under COVID. And now these people are trying to make up all these rules. You shouldn't have to pay anything. You allowed them to put cement down on property that didn't belong to them. So I don't think that you should be cutting deals with these people and we paying for this, that, the other. Some people had done it over in my neighborhood. They didn't make them dig the cement up. So you need to be careful about letting people having access to put semen on public property and use that public property, and we wasn't here to speak. You did this during COVID without any comments from the residents, and that was a miscarriage of justice. And also, I would like to you to open the pavilion at City Isle. I've spoke about this in the past. You took the tables away, the benches, and when you took office, Derek, that's when they closed it down. It's full of bird feces. And I go up there on a regular basis because I'm on the library board, and I see the feces there. So that's a problem. You need to put the tables back and let the resident have the access to that park. I was able to attend the funeral of a very Daytona Beach amazing man, Ed Peck. He's over the Daytona place over all the condominiums, and I'm a member of his Facebook, he only have like 120 friends, and I'm the only African American that I was at the funeral. It was a beautiful event. And Billy Wheeler, I want to thank her for getting that park name after him. The Evan Park, it's Red Cross and Red Lobster. Thank you, Billy, you did a wonderful job. Okay, our next speaker is Libby Coleman, and on deck is Dion Myers. The last meeting that I was here, you have not done anything. You've not been out in the area talking to the mayor, and it's very annoying. If a flood comes, it's not going to be my fault. It's going to be on your hands. And I can't understand why is it that you can't come out and get the job done. You and the city commissioner. I'm up here for a reason and not a season. I live in the area. You may have mentioned something about, I guess, the first time that I came. And you mentioned something about your niece or somebody lived in the area. But nevertheless, I'm in the area now. And it's very nerve-wracking for you to be the mayor, you and my commissioner. You all haven't done one thing. Not one thing have you done. And I need to know what and why haven't you done something about it. You don't live in the area. I do, and there are many other people in the area lives there. And for me to have to come back three times, you have not been Cottle Circle South, it's disturbing. You're not doing your job, and you need to get on it. It's no need to say what you cannot do. You can go across on the beach side and get everything done over there. I'm a human being. I pay taxes, and I'm paying for where I live. And if by the grace of God that he comes in with his reign, there's nothing that I can do. God is in control of everything. You got my vote. So did the city commissioner. And what have you all done? Zero. And I'm tired of coming to meetings looking you straight in the eye, and there's nothing that you have done to satisfy the other members that's in that circle. 
And I told you the last time I was here, I have one drainage right next to my mailbox. And then there's another one. You haven't been out there. I'm home every day, except when I have to go places. But you haven't done anything. And I need to know tonight, what are your intentions? Because it's really, really nerve-wracking. Very much so. And I didn't just vote for you and the city commissioner just to be voting. I didn't vote because of our color. I voted because I thought that you was going to not do one. I'm hurt. The first time that I came here and stood on this podium and, and you, spoke to you. Your time has expired. Thank you so kind. Our next speaker is Dion Myers, and on deck is William Bitteroff. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dion Myers, and I am the headmistress of Rain Academy School of Entrepreneurship. I'm standing on behalf of, or standing in on behalf of Kevin Myers, which is our headmaster. Uh, he would have been here, but unfortunately his mom passed earlier today. Um, on a more positive note, um, we began our school uh, back in 2011 at the former Bonner Elementary. And um, as you know, that's a historic site. So due to the dilapidation issues, they lost the building. Hence, we had to move out. And um, however, the community that we service are students that reside in Pine Haven, um, Lakeside Community, Lakeside Village, um, Daytona Beach Gardens, and those students, when we had to relocate to Ormond Beach, they followed us as well. And um, so we ended up, you know, having to provide transportation for them. You know, it's harder on their families to continue just to, you know, have that um, uh, that choice in schooling that they wanted to pursue for their children. And so we are here um, just seeking support um, financially um, to continue the transportation services and even enhancing our education services that we offer for these students and their families as just as, as we serve as a support um, in education for these families as um, we've done for the past 12 years, going into our 12th year this year. And we understand that community is definitely important. Community is uh, comprised of people. And the most important part about a community is the future of our community are our children. And that is our goal, that is our heart, to serve our community by educating our children and our end goal is for them to, once they matriculate through their academic careers and into their professional you know, endeavors, that they return to their community and um, as just thriving, productive citizens and um, enhance their community even further. So with that, I did present a letter um, with my um, form that I submitted, and also to uh, our commissioner as well, Commissioner May, um, with this um, intent to ask or request for just support of any kind. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is William Bitteroff, and on deck is Ann Ruby. <clears throat> my name is William Bitteroff from 402 East International Speedway Boulevard. I grew up here. And uh, I didn't come here to complain. I came here to congratulate. I know that you all try to take care of all our problems. I know it's more difficult than I could ever imagine the weight that you all have on your shoulders because I have so much respect for all of you. And as for all of you right here today, I greatly appreciate all my, my questions were answered. I wanted to do more family entertainment in Daytona and, and Mrs. Danette Henry was bringing something up. Anybody has anything that's family entertainment, I want to help them if I even have to go out and hand out flyers myself to try to push that here in Daytona. I think it's the future. The other side of it is if there's any issues, uh, uh, I guess say in the past, you know, I didn't understand the difficulties of how hard it is to do your job, any of your jobs. No matter what we do, we can't, 
if there's any solutions I can help with, like the drainage thing or something like that, maybe if I, if we have to do a fundraiser, let's do a fundraiser. It doesn't matter to me. Let's do some stuff together because, you know, you, for instance, you know, I, I know you well enough. You've helped some kids that I know that I've helped. You've helped educate a lot of people I know. Let's go and do some great things together. Okay, and I, I just got a lot of respect. So, thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ann Ruby, and on deck is Corbin Kisner. Hi, Ann Ruby, 137 Park Avenue. On the Nexus study, I'm hoping that when you all speak to the city manager, you all ask for some time frames, particularly around when it becomes effective. You know, you have, you have people walking in every day saying, hey, I have this project, it's on your desk. Is that now bound by this? And so you need some clarity of intent on the time frames for what's crossing in the process in the pipeline. And I hope that when you talk to the city man, um, the whoever you're talking to, that you'll, you'll include that as part of your concern. Um, this call for professionals to evaluate this next study, city staff is professional. The Mid-Florida Housing Projects, professionals. You have a housing authority, professionals. The, P the call for private professionals, real estate agent, real estate people, developers, that's all well and good, but it, they need to be, there needs to be some clarity of understanding there that it's not operating in good faith to pick the maximum number and say, oh, this is the scary number we're going to come up with. You know, $7.2 .2 million was mentioned, that that's what was going to happen with the Amazon project had that fee, the maximum fee been applied. But Amazon, ironically, already has a great workforce housing program, which we didn't take advantage of. And I'm hoping retrospectively we can go back and do that because they know they don't pay their workers enough to live. So there needs to be some operation in good faith and there needs to be a real understanding that a linkage fee on commercial property or an in lieu of fee on residential properties is not a fee to be passed to the consumer. It is not a fee the developer has to pass on to someone final. It is a, it is a money that the city will reimburse him or her for. It's different than an impact fee. So this notion that someone's gonna be 10 years from now paying into the future, on a fee is ridiculous. So I, it's so frustrating to have, I don't see how that's not clear. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to wrap up really quick. The Streamline Hotel on the beach side has been a thorn in the side for many residents on Grandview. If you live on Grandview between Harvey and International, the noise coming out of that place sometimes shakes your house, shakes your windows. Lately, they've got, they were granted a sound permit. Lately, They've, the police have been good about shutting them down at midnight when their permit said they had to be shut down, but they, they got approved in May for a 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. sound permit daily to 2 a.m. That is not re reasonable, and that needs to be changed because they're not good faith actors. And at 2 a.m., I don't know who's going to come shut them down. Our next speaker is Corbin Kisner, and on deck is John Birch. Hi, my name is Colburn Kinzer. I live at 2318 South Peninsula Drive. I don't want to take up very much time. Uh, this is in regards to the Bridgeport Heights thing that got postponed until next meeting. Uh, just a couple of things. I think that since attorney fees are going to be paid and part of the settlement that Mr. Gray and Mr. Stone's attorney fees should be re reimbursed to them because without Ms. Metz firm, I don't think that we'd be where we were at. I think you'd have like 40 or 50 people in here again wanting to speak. And uh, I also read the agreement that came through today and it said that the city would take up to a year to reestablish the water access. And I think that's a long time as it says, I mean, as it is, we've been without it for over two years now and then we're gonna add on another year. And I think that in the agreement earlier, it said that 
time is of the essence, so I think time is of the essence for that, and maybe we could expedite that. And I know it was up to a year, but I would hope that we would put a little effort forward and uh, make that happen as fast as possible. That's it. Thank you. To be clear, the, the agreement didn't cut off that pathway. It'd be continued access. Nothing would be would prevent the public from accessing the river. But currently, as it is with the temporary fencing and the mangroves being planted, there's no possible way that you could walk to the water. That, they own the property. Yeah. Pardon me? Because they currently own the property and, and they're trying to get the property back. Correct. Uh, well, I understand all of that. But before, when it wasn't owned, when it was owned by the city, that access was there. The city made a mistake by giving it away, but now, in lieu of that, my access isn't there anymore. Okay, our next speaker is John Birch, and on deck is Jenny Nazak. Good afternoon, the commission. How are you all doing? Tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning. I'm sitting back and I thought about, I read the paper. I'm learning how to read a little more, especially Ed. And you know, when I see top official quit after black woman named as town manager, I don't know if you all read that. And it came to my mind thinking about to some we give, meaning that they get a lot of bread. To some we take, meaning that we don't allow them to do some things because they are not, like you said, the name, the name. So I always come up and talk about my community. And the reason why, because of my upbringing. I know you all know that. If something bothers me when we can help a person with money, we can give them something. But when a person needs their home, their home, as I would still say, you know why I go back to that home. A home don't mean that it has to be beautiful and all the great things in it, but it's, you know, it's a lot of drama in those new nice houses too. But in those little raggedy shacks, it was a lot of love. And love what makes a home. It's not the building. And I'm getting older now and I'm learning more. I'm headed on in now. And it seems like the fight has been real hard. And I think about, you know, you always tell about the great minds of men. Well, my brother was a great mind. He went to West Point. Great mind. Mom had a, mom had a dream of living on the beach. So as the blacks moved off of that beach in Bethune Beach, with probably none of you all go down to, especially blacks, I go. Mom bought a little house. And it was a little raggedy house. And Bobby... After they built a three million dollar house next door to our raggedy house, oh, you know, oh, the raggedy house raggedy. So Bobby hired Mr. Huger, who was a great mine contractor. So guess what they did? They got a permit from the city, but didn't realize you had to get a permit from the what state, because you live on the water. So guess what? Tear the house down, never built back. But the deal was, the little mind of Mr. Birch, I got the plans approved through the whole state. I did. A little education, several minutes. All I'm saying is you got to take all of it together to make it work. And I admire you all. God bless you all. Okay. Our next speaker is Jenny Nazak, and on deck is Doyle Lewis. Good evening, everybody. Jenny Nazak, 501 Harvey. Um, it's, it's too bad the lady whose first name is Libby. I forgot her last name. She's not here, but Col Ms. Coleman. Um, the, the day after the last meeting where she spoke, I went to Cottle Circle very early in the morning just to take a look around. And I mean, it is. It's right in the part of town that's really low lying. And so this is a thing, some of you all might remember an email that I've sent where I drew like a little cartoon of like a bowl and it was like representing our whole city. And it's like a before and after picture. One is it's all smooth with not enough plants or things are cut too short. I mean, everything, pavement's gonna happen, it just is, we're in a city. 
And then the after picture is like, if there's more plants and vegetation planted on every starting way uphill, the problem always starts uphill. You can't just address the problem at the bottom of the bowl. And it's never just like, oh, it's zone six's fault or something. No, we all participate. And this year, I'm really obsessed because this year, this is the hottest, crispiest summer I've ever experienced here. This is actually the summer I was afraid we were gonna have last summer after last spring was really crispy. And, but last summer ended up being a, a juicy summer. Like the rain barrels were like full all summer. This summer is like, it's so hot. Did anybody get any rain last night from those beautiful thunderclouds? Raise your hand if you actually got some rain. Okay, so, woo, some people got rain. Yeah, I knew it, had, knew it had to be raining somewhere. But our, our, land, our landscaping practices need to really start defaulting to more heat mitigation. And, and heat, that is, there's two sides of the same coin. It's um, water absorption and drought mitigation. It's all sides of the same coin. And then throw some food in there. The, the gentleman who spoke before me, I, I was like, oh, that's the guy who brought the watermelons with the seeds. I hope you people ate those watermelons and spat the seeds all over town. And I hope we get so many watermelons. And also, by the way, every time I buy an avocado that's not from around here or like um, a mango or a banana, we could be growing these everywhere in Daytona Beach. We could have like we could have a massive food force, a massive heat mitigation, mitigation, cyclist shading, pedestrian shading, um, tiny business incubating food for. Oh, sugar cane too, by the way. So let's grow some stuff, you know, that that we can eat and that will provide us with sustenance. And yeah, I always have I always have more to say, but <laughs> to be continued always. <laughs> Everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Look forward to you coming back. Yes. I, I always like to give credit. Yeah. Credit to, and give credit to because I'm always thinking about ADU. The original person that brought that up. Can we not hear me? The original person that bought that up is Commissioner Henry. I liked the idea, started doing more homework on it because it was a great idea. I believe the tiny homes, the doorbell cameras, we like your things. So I just want to give credit where credit was due. <laughs> yes, you. correct. Okay. Very classy. Our next speaker mm -hmm. is Doyle Lewis and on deck is Maria Johnson. And John Birch, that watermelon was good. It really was. That mango tree, too. All right. <laughs> Doyle Lewis, Daytona Beach, United States. I've got about four things to speak on, so I'll split it up about 60 seconds apiece. Affordable housing, workforce, housing, linkage, fee, nexus, study. That's a very serious situation there. I'm going to repeat it. Affordable workforce housing linkage fee nexus study. That sounds like that's a professional. But yet, people want to question it. I've owned some businesses since I was 14 years old. My very first job was fancy cabinets built by scratch, piece by piece at a time. Eight years later, I started my own housing, fresh out of high school, contractor. Had six to eight years with the builder and had two supply companies, some of the two largest ones in my area, supplying me. I was only 18. What makes a person a professional in an area is you constantly do it every single day. Right now, I'm a bicycle specialist. So thank you for passing that. It is another tool, but if you let people question it apart, they will. The people, one of the speakers brought up was some of the local professionals. Well, obviously, they didn't see the information correctly because 
it's taken 30 to 40 years to make all these homeless people in America. Some of the oldest bankers try to make the young work harder and longer, which wears them out when they're young. Now I'm going to move on to my second. First step shelter. I give them so much credit. 25 people in a month. Let's see if anybody else can match that. That's 25 people you just saved from getting ran over by a car that couldn't stop at a stop sign. You ever watch them drive at a stop sign? They're looking to the left and they're hitting the gas and running over the person there when they're turning to the right. They're looking to the left and they're going this way. And that's why most pedestrians get run over. Just make my little pause. Got to get that drum beat going again. Large tire bicycles and buses. County and city buses. Please, when you look at the uh, bicycle situation, I've had a bicycle that's got a four inch tire on it. It will not fit on a bus. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker tonight is Maria Johnson. My name is Maria Johnson. I'm at 416 South Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Daytona Beach. As of tonight is the last night. Because of the board members, I appreciate every single last one of you having this platform for me to come down here and tell what's been going on in my own personal life. And I just wanted to thank Captain Lee and all the officers um, officially for the justice, the honor, the protection, and the village. And also thank Chief Young for going over and beyond to make sure that our family was taken care of. And um, as well, I would like to speak with you about the homeless program that I read about that starts August 1st, something I got a text message about that I would like to figure out more information about that. And also, I wanted to bring to the attention of Beautiful Beginnings Child Care Center. In December, my son was in their care, and they did him every way but right, child abuse. And we have been on the waiting list quite some time now. Helping Hands has recently called, and we're just trying to make that connection in the midst of everything that's going on in my life. But I want, to, I want an investigation. I want to know that my family can continue to serve the purpose that we're here, is to have abundant life and to grow and to help the community and be what God called us to be without being uh, victims of predators. I live on Martin Luther King. There's a lot of drug activity. There are people that speed up and down that street uh, from 10 to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I don't feel comfortable in that area, I haven't felt comfortable in that area because where there's drugs, people aren't in their right mind. And the Boys and Girls Club needs attention over there in the area. There is a lot of activity that's, that should not be happening. I, I am reluctant to let my teen go over there, and that's who it's for. You know, the teen, the adults that participate with their children. And I'm not able to be a family at a family organization because of other activity that's, that has been allowed to go on there because that area doesn't have the attention that it needs. So that's what I came to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I would like something done um, concerning Beautiful Beings Child Care Center. Okay, well, I think you might have wanted to call DCF or some authority because that's not really within the purview of this body. We have been is. in contact with them, and that's why I'm speaking about it here is because I felt like I've knocked, I've sent enough emails, and I've, we've done the forensic interviews and things like that. I just want to know why I come. We are in a standstill, and as well, while we're trying to heal, there's other children at the mercy of an unhealthy mind behind closed doors, and that shouldn't and because of the lack of justice, that's prolonging healing in my family. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. That concludes this our meeting. Good night.